I was going to say, have you tried pushing it any further? Like, I know you 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 asked it to kind of code particular things. Have you tried saying, can you code an endless runner and just? Uh, I, I I haven't tried that, but you know what? Let's do it right now. <laughs> If you don't mind that, I can do it. No, go ahead. This is it li live. Yeah, let's see. Uh, generate Unity C sharp code um, for the main um, game loop class on an endless uh, for an endless runner. Let's see what it does. Sometimes it doesn't work. You know, you just it'll just stall for a minute. Especially when you give it something complicated. Oh, here we go. Right. So yeah, it checks. Okay, it hasn't actually implemented a jump here, but it's checked that if you press space, it'll jump. It's moving you constantly towards the right, and it's correctly multiplying you by delta time. Then it's spawning new obstacles. See, so, yeah, I mean, ah, so this this goes on the player. So this class will go on the player. It spawns a new obstacle and it puts it at a random range. Now it's it's put it somewhere where you know it's going to appear in the middle of the screen, and then it creates an object at the at that position. Right. Um, okay. So now I can tell. So so now, in fact, I could even show you what it does. So the the problem the problem with this right now is, well, one, I, I'll tell it this. Can you um, change the update loop to be fixed update? I want the game to be frame rate independent. Right. Let's say let's see if it'll fix. If it does it right, it will get rid of this delta time and change it to uh, fixed delta time, or just not at all. Either would be fine. Yeah, it changed it to fixed delta time. That's good. So it understood that. Right. Yeah, this uses a fixed update, which is called a fixed rate, independent of the frame rate. This means the game logic will be executed consistently, regardless of how fast or slow the game is running. Yeah, so that's working. So now we'll do, uh, let's make a new folder script, and we'll make a class called, what's it called? Endless game, endless runner game loop. Unity doesn't ship with just like a primitive shape. So I always put like a shape in there. Mm -hmm. So now we've got okay. a shape in the scene. Right. So that's gonna we'll stick it on there, this class. There we go. Where are we? Okay. Copy code. Paste that there. Save that. Compile that. <clears throat> right. The thing is, it's spawning an obstacle. Ah, so obstacle prefab. This code won't compile because it has a prefab that's not declared anywhere. So, can you declare the member variable obstacle prefab so I can use it right now? It causes a compile error. Let's see if it understands that. I'd be surprised if it understood that. There we go, public game object. Right, so this code's gonna work now. That's amazing. Yeah. Right, so we can copy okay, that. Then. Yeah, now, now there's no more compile errors, the code compiles. Um, I need to do something now, we'll call this obstacle. And we'll make a prefabs folder. And we'll put the obstacle in there. Oh, whoops. So that we can spawn it. Because a prefab, a prefabricated asset is something that we can reuse, spawn into our scene or whatever. Let's make these ones. In fact, no, I can, you know what? I can tell it to make it green. Um, <laughs> can you take the sprite renderer component on the obstacle prefab um, and set its color to red, oh, actually blue, when um, after you instantiate it. Let's see if we can do that. You see how much we can get away with like n me doing nothing. So 
So it spawns at her, instantiates it, and then... Oh, okay, so here it com it got confused, right? It tried obstacle instead of obstacle prefab, but it did change the mm -hmm. color. Right. I see. That was a mistake. The I wanted you to change oh. obstacle prefab's color, not obstacle. Let's see if it gets this. Oh, now it's telling me to do it in... The, it tells me to do it myself. <laughs> but will it actually... Will it fix its code? Oh, this... Now it's telling me, hey, you just instantiate it and you change the colour. Right. I see. <laughs> but I want you to change the colour for me after spawning the obstacle prefab object should have her sprite renderer component and you can get component and change its color oh. no it's well it might have understood anyway let's see no see say here it's got confused so it can't understand the difference between obstacle prefab and obstacle. But it did in general almost get it. So let, let's assume that, you know, we're going to be a, a bit nice of it and just make up for its small mistakes. Now, I'm going to make this one pink, the one that runs the game. This is actually the player, and it's going to move right. Um, this is just an obstacle, which we don't need anymore. We'll call this player, we'll put the script on it, because that's what it told us to do. Right, and we'll put the obstacle in there. So now what's going to happen is, it's going to spawn regularly. Wait, how often is it? Oh, uh, every single frame is going to spawn a bunch of stuff all over the screen. Probably in a <laughs> circular pattern, I would imagine. Um, or maybe a square. Oh no, it'd be a square. Yeah. Right, so yeah, you see it's spawning all of these <clears throat> I see um, and it spawned lots of them that's actually interesting that, ah and look it's not used a floating point it's only using integers so that's why that it looks like a you know a spectra it looks like um, quantum stuff a slit <laughs> um, and, but it's only doing them in X as well it's not doing them in Y Right, so I see. So now what I want to tell it to do is, um, if it still remembers, let's see if it remembers all the way back then. Um, when you randomize the positions, can you use floating points instead of integers? Yeah, okay. Interesting. There you go, it's done it. Right, so now let's recompile that. There we go. So now we're spawning a lion. Now let's tell I it. I see. Um, the, ne the next thing that's a problem is that it that it's spawning objects too frequently right now. So um, I don't want to run spawn obstacle every frame. Can we run it um, every, uh, at random intervals between 0 0.8 seconds and 1.5 seconds? I, I'm also interested to see if it remembers its original code because you know it's been it's been looking at this function over and over again. Does it mm -hmm. remember that? Oh yeah, it does remember. Spawn timer. Okay, very nice. Update the spawn timer. Right, and if the spawn timer is less than or equal to zero, so it's constantly, you know, ticking down the clock by the right amount. 
if the clock is less than zero, then it sets the spawn timer as a new value from 0 0.8 to 1.5, and then it will spawn an obstacle. So yeah, that's perfect. And it's remembered the changes I've made. So it has been keeping a track of everything. So now let's run this new code. So now you should see that the things will appear like between every, say, at random intervals. Mm. All right, so it's doing that. Okay, so now, okay, one thing I'm interested in is why is the object not moving? It seems here transform.position plus equals vector three dot forward times, ah, okay, okay, okay. The game is 2D, not 3D. Ah, okay. Right, it was, it was making a 3D game. I didn't think about that. I I thought it had made a mistake, but actually it's not. It, it, I was thinking, like, why isn't the player moving right? But the player's moving yeah. forward. Right, I see. Along that's the why it's moving see. all the obstacles from in the x-axis because it wants you to jump left and right um, um and then it's spawning them at the same position uh should we yes. should we just go with i don't know whether to tell it uh hey what do you think is more interesting tell it that it should change to 2d or try and just go with it and make the 3d game it wants to make <laughs> we can go two routes here right you it's your choice I don't know, it's interesting, isn't it? I'm kind of intrigued to see what it makes of a 3D in this runner. Because that's not a, a thing that I think is a thing, is it? I don't know. I, I mean, I play jam games that are a bit similar to that. But go on, like, yeah, we'll make a 3D in this runner. So instead of using these squares, now we're going to use cubes. Right. And this is going to be player. Okay, well, we'll go into 3D mode then. Right. Um... So we've got the player here, and then the obstacles now, I need to change these. Uh, 3D object, cube, this is an obstacle now. All right, and uh, I need to update on the player. Oh, the player, I've got rid of the script. What was it called? Endless runner game loop. Normally you wouldn't put this on the player, you'd make a, a different class as the manager, but there's no real problem. I mean, it, it's not nice architecture, but whatever, it works. Right, so so now if we look in 3D, um, oh actually, the camera itself, sh I need to change it to 3D. Perspective camera, there we go. And I'm just going to put the game over here so we can look at this in three dimensions. Right, yeah, so you see the player's running here. And these things are appearing left to the left and right. Okay, so... There we go. The, the logical problem here, though, is that the... Obviously, the player's moving forward. Um, the camera isn't. The camera should move with the player for a start the player should move faster and these things need to move towards the player mm. to be honest these things it would actually be better if the player didn't move forward mm -hmm. and the player simply moved left and right and then everything came at you mm -hmm. um but i mean there's two ways of looking at this right e either we can have the things come at you or we can make you go at the things but if we're mm -hmm. making you go at the things, then they need to... They can't just be spawning at this depth. If you see yeah. what I mean, they need, to, they need to be moving back and back. Um, so, uh, right, so let's not tell it the game's 2D, not 3D. Let's tell it that... Um, the... Okay, first of all... Um... Can we move the camera to follow the player? Let's see what it makes of this. I'm not sure it will understand that the player, this class is the player. I'm interested to see. We've got main camera here. 
Move the camera to follow the player. The main camera is transformed at position equals a new transformed at position. It's got the X position. It uses my X position, but it uses its own Y position and its own Z position. Would okay. that work? Yeah, so it's going to track me in the X plane, but not the Z plane. So basically, if if I do this, it's going to follow me as I move left and right. It's going to follow me left and right, but it's not going to follow, um, you know, it, I actually don't want it to do that. I want it to follow in Z. So wait, let me put the camera on it. I'll show you, see, here's the camera. Now, if I move it left, you see the camera, uh, well, the camera's following in that player, but the camera should really you know, the camera should stay with the player. I see. So, um, wait, uh, okay, it, it said something. We move the camera to follow the player by setting its position to the X coordinate, but keep the Y and the Z the same. This will cause the camera to move horizontally with the player while remaining stationary in the Y and Z directions. This will give the illusion that the camera is following the player. Um, I need the camera to follow the player in the Z plane too, or the player will get away from the camera. Okay. Okay, interesting. It's interesting that it has follow, move the camera to, is that even real code? Follow method? I don't even know if that exists. Mm -mm. Should we give it a go? There is no such f thing. This is invented a function, which is interesting. That doesn't exist. Mm. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm talking about, but uh, <laughs> the problem, the problem with this is um, it's following at the player's position, which means it won't be able to see mm. the player. Um, oh, right. Can can you offset the Z position slightly so the camera is behind the player? Wait. Um, follows slightly behind the player rather than following it, um, being on the player's Z, uh, Z position. The thing is though, as you can see, like, even though it can make a game, you kind of got to know how to make a game at the same time. Like, it's mm -hmm. not like you can just say, make an endless runner. Like, you can, you can definitely work with this to make it generate code. But the more you know about game development, the easier it's going to be for you to get it to generate sensical output. I see. I see. So, how do you do? You think that's how it would be? It could be used then. You know, so experienced game developers basically just getting the AI to type out code rather than them all sitting there and doing it themselves. Yeah, get, getting it to write mundane code, especially. Or let's say, as I get older, let's say my hands stop working as well. I get arthritis or something. I, I, I could, uh, I could get this to do it for me. Hey. This is interesting. Mm. It said do this and then I'm not sure now if it's waiting. Okay, I'm just going to resubmit the same thing. Okay, yeah, I got it there. It just jammed up. Right, there we go. Yeah, this is this works. Very nice. Well mm. done. Yeah, we got there in the end. So, do you think you would consider like trying to make a game completely using AI? Do you think it'd be possible? Uh, yes. Would it be a good game? Remains to be seen. But <laughs> could I make a game? Yeah, I could make a game using AI <laughs> with me suppose... as well. You know, it's <laughs> that's the caveat, isn't it? Like, hey, look, there we go. <laughs> the, the camera, the camera's moving with the player. Um. Let's move the camera up a bit. There we go. Okay. I mean, this is 
you know, I'm not going to bother about making the game good. I'm just going to make it work. Um, yeah. If I were, wait. Uh, instead of be f being two units behind the player, can we make it five units behind the player? Yes, it's way too close right now. You know, if we want to see you jump. Okay, there we go. It's done it. Mm. Well done, Mr. AI. Okay, fantastic. Right, yeah, we're falling behind, the stuff spawning. Um, can the player move faster? It might even give us, it, it, ideally I'd like it to give us a variable like give it a public speed that I can change. If it does that, I'd be very impressed. Oh, yeah, it has. It gave a speed that I can tweak myself in the editor. Mm -hmm. Right then, yeah. Uh, oh, it's got too long, so we'll just copy this so we got everything yeah oh there's no such thing as follow that's the thing it's got this little follow function that isn't true <laughs> there is no follow method on the camera on the camera class you should use the transform dot position method you used it. Wait, co you were earlier, that's better. Let's see if it sometimes it argues with you, it's like, no, I'm pretty sure that's true. Like it it will sit there and like shout at you like mm. sometimes they say there is a follow method on the camera class, even if there isn't. So I'm interested to see if it argues with me here. Oh wait, yeah. Okay, yeah, it understood. You are correct, the follow method is not a built-in method. How come it's so good at code but it's so bad at physics? <laughs> it just argues with me when I tell it about like relativity or something, but when, when it comes to code it's like, oh, we, no, you're right. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, there we go. It's, it's doing the right thing now. Um, right, so... So now we should be going much faster. Yeah, there we go. So... Um, I want to be able to move the character left and right when I press left and right on the keyboard. I, I just wanted to double check what your, this is, so this is OpenAI, this is GP, chat GPT, is that right? Yeah, this is, yeah, yeah, chat GPT. Okay. But I never knew that it could write Unity code until, you know, I posted that tweet. Oh, it's look, phenomenal, really, isn't it? Sidestep. Right. Let's see if this code is actually nonsense. If you press left... Okay, so it's doing it with left. Okay, that's right. Okay, that's right. Yep, this is correct. Um, it is a shame that there's a sort of character limit on this. Mm. Um... Right, so this is before the forward. Right, it's not going to be the best game feel in the world or anything, but yeah, I can move left and right now. Okay. There you go. Um, let's game feel it up a bit. <laughs> I would like to be able to move... Wait, when you move left and right, can you do it as uh, a force... Um, and also implement a drag because right now it's too static oh but then it's going to want a rigid body it's going to be like well it, okay here's the thing if it understands now it should realize Ooh. that actually you can't move the position left and right with with just a transform you need a rigid body so let's see if it can understand right now the player should change to a, a rigid body drag force 
Or, I mean, it could just, you know, figure it out. Let's see what it does. Yeah, it got the component add force. Yeah. Right. Add a, and it adds its own drag. Yep. And that's the correct formula for, I mean, F, um, F equals BV. Yeah, that's the right formula for drag. Um, uh, instead of getting the rigid body component three times, can we cache it and start? Let's see if it understands that. Because right now we're getting component, then getting component, then getting component. This was that problem that I used in my other post. Do you know where I, mm -hmm. um, you saw the one where it, where it optimized it? Let's see if it, yeah. if it understands this. Because there's no way I'm using this code. It's dirty. <laughs> Let's see. Rigid body. Yep. Rigid body is this thing. <laughs> this is good. Okay, let's... And I really like how it, it made its own drag and didn't use rigid body drag. Because I don't like yeah. the rigid body drag. It's like a black box. I don't like using those. So mm. so now we're adding a force. Um, and then applying a drag. It Also, this is not true. To slow them down when they're not moving isn't true. It's always going to do that. But that's, it's right to do that. Mm. Right, so now we've got that. Um, I don't know how fast or slow it will be. Maybe these parameters need balancing. If it's nice, I'll be impressed. Oh wait, there is no, there is no rigid body. Oh, it, it crashed because uh, I haven't added a rigid body. Rigid body. Let's turn off gravity and drag. I'll give it a mass of one, make it continuous. Okay, there we go. Reset. Right. Oh. Huh? I need to um freeze the rotation. And one other thing I'd like to do is add a light into the scene really quick because it's just annoying me not having a light. Light directional light, there we go. Yeah that's we go. Right. Um so the other thing, I mean, there are two more things. One is, it, um, can you um, can you add a low amount of gravity so the player can fall and and die and die if they get to a y of less than what what should we say? The player dies if they get less than minus five. I just want a slight amount of gravity, like, if it's too much, then it's just going to be a problem for this kind of game. It's thinking. Yeah, it is. Or maybe it's, like, hammed up with someone else's request. Yeah, let's try again. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. I don't know if this is going to confuse it, because there's quite a lot of things to ask here, where we're telling it, can you, first of all, can you, can you add, can you add gravity? And second, can you let it die? Those are, like, two, two things. Yeah, we got gravity. Five, interesting. Let's add that in there. And then... Now I'm looking for it to add force. Really, as well, I should... I can't be bothered to do this because the mass is going to be the same anyway. But I would tell it to either multiply everything by the mass or change it to force mode acceleration because I don't want it to be mass dependent but it's you always get the same mass so who cares um so yeah apply gravity to the player right so now that now the player is going to fall there we go oh and the camera's staying in the same that's position so that's nice right yes because we didn't put the specifier why did we for the camera yeah which is good because, you know, yeah. we don't want the camera to follow you as you fall. Uh, so there's kind of two more things to do here. One is, can you implement the jump function? The jump method. Wait. 
Okay, this is where it gets complicated, right? Because I think it's just going to add a force immediately, which is not a particularly nice solution. Mm. But I'll accept it. Because <laughs> I don't need it to do something. I'm not giving the AI my secret source. Um, <laughs> if, it, if it just adds force, and that's acceptable. Probably add a very large force of, called jump strength or something. Jump force, yep, there we go. I mean, that's not much. Oh, it's gonna always check. Okay. Right, so, um, I mean, I could get fancy with it. I could try and get, but I mean, for the, in the first place, um, can we make it so you can only jump when you are standing on an object? This is where it's gonna get complicated, right? Because first, mm. then it needs to do collision detection. It's gonna have to do like an on, on collision enter function to check that it's standing on an object in the first place. Register that, hold a grounded state for whether you're on the ground. Yeah, there we go, grounded. Okay. It's remarkable, really, what it can understand. Yeah. You know. Ah, but that's interesting because it didn't do it. You see, they've added this. Here, let's continue. See, the, it told it told me that we can add this is grounded property, but it's not actually done that. Mm. Um. Oh, it's continuing this function because it's not finished. Right. Well, this isn't. This is. Um, okay. Oh, I, actually, yeah, it's done it though. That actually didn't do it before, but then when I told it to continue, it did it. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it says player rigid body is grounded, which is um, okay. Is grounded is not a member variable of rigid body. You will have to declare your own bool is grounded um, and write a check for it. That's a bit much to ask of it, but let's see if it can. If we can get it to do that, then, then the only other thing left is to make the, um, the actual objects spawn in sensible positions and move well, they don't even need to move towards you because you're moving. Mm -hmm. So as long as they're, you know, we need to make it so instead of the objects spawning at the same location, they're always spawning at a certain Z position in front of the player. Oh, yeah, there we go. It's not a member variable to check. You have to implement your own logic. Here's an example of how we could do this. Let's see. I want to see this. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, only if it is grounded. Okay. Um, because of the character limit, I c um, can't see past if is grounded. Can you post the rest of the code? So is there a character limit then on each reply? Yeah, that... yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, has it done it? Yes, here's the rest of the code. Thank you. Okay, so we've got jump. <laughs> because of the character limit, I can't see past um, the line. Can you post the rest of the code? Oh, it's one obstacle. Yeah, okay, it's in the color. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, so it's implemented jump. Okay. Ah, uh, and we got jump force. Did, did it add jump force? Yeah, it did. After gravity. Okay, good robot. Um, I forgot that I did the sprite renderer thing. Uh, we're no longer using a sprite renderer now we're using just a normal renderer. Um, can you set the 
renderers material color to blue um, in spawn obstacle instead of the sprite render. I mean, well, well, we have a jump. The problem is right now, like, this bool that it's declared is grounded, is always going to be false. Even my ren thing's got this, like, it's never assigned. <laughs> so, we need to determine when. Hey, what's going What doesn't it like about this? Oh, it doesn't like that. Um, the, the, this is slightly inefficient to do it like that. Because what, what it's going to do here, it multiplies left to right. So it's going to multiply a vector by a flow, which means it's going to do x, y, and z by this. Then it's going to do x, y, and z by this. Whereas when you put brackets around them, then it's going to multiply this by this. And then I multiply see. that by x, y, z. So, you know, it's triple triple as efficient. The thing is, the jump's going to be rubbish. Because right now, it, it, it's only happening on one frame, and it's not much. If, if you see here, the gravity mm. value is 5, and the jump force is 5. So, it's just going to... It's going to do a little tiny bump. Like, you, it's not even going to be detectable. Or it is, if I put it mm. to, like, a 1,000, then, you know... Um... <laughs> Wait, there's no rigid body of... Wait, sorry, I didn't think I cleared my arrows. Oh, there we go, that was a jump. Oh, the other thing is... Uh, yeah, okay, 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 okay. Wait, let's edit this. Oh, save and submit. Can I edit here? Oh. Uh, can you move the jump function into input and... Um, into update instead of fixed update uh, and also can you wait the the jump logic into update instead of fixed update and also can you um, write an on collision enter function to um, determine whether it is grounded is true mm. Let's see, if it, let's see if it gets that. You can move the jump logic from fixed update to update and you can implement an on collision enter function. Let's see if it gets this. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it, mo it did, it moved the logic. Ah, uh, but it moved all of the logic. It moved the input as well. Uh, uh, I'm not completely mad at that. It's acceptable. Um, but... Wait, show me on collision enter. I'm just interested to see if it will actually, you know, do the grounded flag. Because if it does, then we've got a game. Then, you know, that's going to happen. I see. So you can jump in here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I can, I can go left and right as well. Like, you know, if, if I had time to actually... Although it's an impossible game right now because the cubes are <laughs> stupid and I, there was no way I'd actually manage to land on one of them. But mm. you know, you can see start to see the limitations of the AI though. Like in terms of you know, it's getting slower and slower mm -hmm. the longer we we kind of do this, mm -hmm. and of course the character limit as well is like another factor that's really limiting. Mm -hmm. But you know, this is fairly recent version i think of this open ai kind of gpt you can you can imagine you know even in a year's time a lot of those limitations will be you know improved or ironed out yeah and i mean the problem is i'm limited by other people right because everyone in the world's trying this right now you know they don't realize that our use case is really important and okay, <laughs> oh, okay. exactly oh it's come back oh it's just showing the whole class again. It's gradually becoming more where the developer is the sculptor rather than the creator. You know, you, a lot of tools now can give you like code like this or, or you know, generate trees and grass and do QA testing and things, all this kind of stuff. But 
so the the kind of and do even creating create levels in games and the game developer's role is now more like just tweaking and, and sculpting and taking bits out and putting things in rather than sitting there and doing something from scratch yeah it's definitely more like that although it's still we're still nowhere near that level yet um mm. but the but it's definitely more like that than it used to be you know when i was a child and people would make they'd have to write their own engines from scratch like the amount of stuff that mm. unity can just do for me and especially unreal unreal mm. just loads of the stuff that i've had to write myself over the years in unity just exists out of the box in unreal uh, when I make games for myself, I write all the code because it's just quicker for me. Um, th this thing's done this. It's made... It m I need to make a tag, though. These things add a tag called ground. I could get it to tag them itself, but... Also, I would never do it like the way it's done it now. I think that's a stupid way of doing it, but it worked. <laughs> um... I could also say, uh, can you make it so that the, um, can you make it check that the normal of the collision is, uh, wait, the Y normal of the collision is greater than 0 0.5, so we know it landed on the top, um, before you set is grounded to true. I'm interested if we'll get that. Essentially, right now, what's going to happen is, if we bump into the side of the of the thing, then we'll get our jump back. Also, I mean, the jump function—you never lose your jump. So, uh, after you jump, can we set as grounded to false? You could you could also make this work a lot better as well immediately by if, if I just do this. Whoop. Um, you know, now suddenly it's going to be a lot more playable. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. No, just the platforms are longer. It's pretty cool. It's impressive that it can, you know, generate this code, oh. which is by by and large, you know, mostly you know intelligible, workable code. This is this is ones. nice. That's very nice. It's done a good job here. Like mm. uh, I, I was expecting a bare bones one, but it got it. Look, it, it checks if the player's crying over the ground. Then it loops through all the contact points in the collision, and then it checks if the Y normal of the contact point is greater than 0 0.5, and then it says the ground is true. And then I didn't tell it to do this, but it breaks out the loop because we only need to find one valid contact point. Wow. So it will check every single like bit of the mesh that's touching every other bit of the mesh, but then it will go, well, we don't actually need to check all of that. So now, uh, there we go. Um, oh, so, so sorry. Oh, wait, no, that's right. After you jump, it's grounded, should be false. Right, so, yeah, I mean, now we have a game. Um, what, I'll just quickly tell it while it's going. Um, instead of spawning the obstacles um at a z position of was it zero actually i can just look at my code over quicker right? spawn obstacle yeah. so right now we're spawning them at uh as a position of 20. instead of spawning obstacles at as a position of 20.0f can you spawn them at the player's Z position plus uh, some arbitrary public float um, spawn officer. Wait. Let's see if it understands my English. Look at that! It's, when you actually get it, it's so quick. Is I, I actually don't think it is slowing down. I think it's just that we're in a queue or something. Because did you see there? It did not. It. It didn't have to. We were like, oh, maybe it's analyzing all our stuff. But there, it was instant. It's just that. You know, look at this. Random x range minus one one. 
Okay, it's actually changed this fu function completely. Minus minus one one. Then it's got. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. Right. Okay, I like that. I actually don't quite like it because it changed my values, but um, instead of being from mine, instead of the random x being between minus one of and one of, can we do it between minus seven f and seven of, and instead of using sprite renderer. Can we just use renderer, sprite renderer.color? Can we use render renderer.material.color? We're using a normal renderer now, not a sprite renderer. That's a lot to tell it, you know. I don't know if it's implemented at the top, but I can do that. Um, so the obstacle spawn offset, we'll put it as like t uh, 10, maybe. Oh, ow. I'm stuck on it. I didn't think about that. You can actually just get stuck. Obstacle spawn offset, let's put it at 20. Oh, no. Out. You uh, went quick enough. No, the the problem is I've got friction. Um, <laughs> and if I just add a physics material, frictionless, and give it zero, put that on there. Um, where? Oh, it's on the collider in the physics material. What? Did I? Maybe I did a 2D one instead of 3D one. Create physics material frictionless. Oh yeah, it's got really high friction, 0.6, that's mad. Right. Stick that on there and stick on the boxes as well. Now I should actually just slip off it, hopefully, unless my, yeah, that's right. Do do do. What did I really want to quickly do? Ah, uh, we'll make it spawn clear closer to the player, right? Um, we'll just put it at five, which is stupid, but we'll actually hit them that way. Uh, I'm not sure why it is grounded doesn't go into true, but you know, I'm I'm actually endless running. <laughs> um but is grounded is false, whereas this grounded is true. Maybe it should actually be minus, you know, maybe it, that's my logic messed up. Uh No. On collision enter, these are definitely tagged with ground, right? No, it's not tagged with ground, that's the problem. I didn't trust myself. I was right the first time, probably. I blame my knowledge of maths instead of my... There we go, I'm getting my thing back. And as well, you know, now the gravity is a bit low, but it gave us all those parameters. So let's make the gravity like 10 instead. Or actually, you know, we can make it 20. Oh, that's too much. <laughs> um, well, we can actually just, no, actually we can't. Um, There we go, I mean... What's that? You got a box jumping up and down? 
Yeah, we got platform spawning. I mean, it's not a particularly compelling game because the the pieces are appearing so close to me that I can't actually predict them or react to them particularly well. Um, yeah. But I mean, it. I would say this qualifies as an endless runner. Quick, get it on the iOS store. Yeah, the first <laughs> the first AI generated game. That was pretty good. That's pretty cool, yeah. That's remarkable. Not bad for an hour's work. Yeah. When did we actually start? I don't remember like when the because we we had a chat before. We did. It was probably about yeah. It was probably about an hour because I, I think we started this about twenty past one or something. Yeah. And a lot of that was yeah. just waiting to because we're in a queue. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And as well, these values can be tweaked as well. Like this. This. Um this thing spawning a bit far away from me but if i mm -hmm. a bit close to me rather but if i put it at eight or something ow and then i'm just gonna stretch it a bit more so that i actually the problem is i oh there we go there we go this is a lot more reactable although the jump is completely unnecessary to be honest yeah that's it and the camera position yeah the it needs to be camera. higher doesn't it yeah i can actually just do that oh well, that's too high i can't see the player now well we can just make this if the if the actual did has it done that color code oh i didn't like that Oh yeah, that was the next thing I was gonna do. I asked it to move these between minus seven and seven and nine. But I mean, I'm gonna end up just falling off immediately. Is a problem. Um, also, yeah, let's just let's just change. Let's just make a new material and just change the color. Material, whatever. Make it blue. I know red. Right. Move this out of the way so you can actually see. There we go. Oh, oh yeah, that's much more. Oh, that's much more playable, isn't it? Yeah. Ah, oh, it's too far. Oh. <laughs> I need more, uh, more sideways sidestep speed ten. <laughs> the problem is the first one needs to be underneath me. You know what? I can. I can just fix that myself really quick. I just can. I can just um. Like, I can't be asked waiting for it to do this, but obviously it will be able to do this. Spawn initial ob obstacle. We'll just spawn it at zero, and we'll do it at start, and then, yeah. I need more gravity. <laughs> it's time to become a gamer. Oh yeah, there we go. That's a game. That's it. That's quite fun. Oh, uh, uh, no, no, no. oh just got it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, I, I actually want to play. No. <laughs> uh, uh. I mean, it's it's a game, right? Like, it is a game. It's definitely a game. Yeah, <laughs> I'm quite good at it. It's and it's actually like challenging as well. It's not like simple. It's not like the most challenging game I've ever played, but it's. Uh, I don't know. I think it's, <laughs> I'm having fun. <laughs> Could even um, make the background less. Uh... I don't know. Let's make it more interesting. What's the? Um, has it managed to write that color code? Yeah, it got the. Yeah, it did it. Mm -hmm. Um. 
it still thinks it's called obstacle. That's the biggest mistake. Oh wait, no, no look, now it right. is called obstacle. Ah, uh, it's been defined, is it? Oh, maybe I was wrong all along. Yeah, because it spawned a game object. Maybe I was being an idiot. I think I actually was telling it the wrong thing. I was making a mistake. It isn't. It, it was right because it named it obstacle itself. It, I was just looking at that and going, "Oh, it's the wrong color." But no, it's spawning mm. this one. Yeah, it, it. I made the mistake. Uh -huh. There we go. And there we go, AI game. That's brilliant. Well, I guess that's a good note to to leave it then. Um, yeah. You can you can show this off on Twitter later. <laughs> just be like, yeah, look, just made this in an hour. Yeah. He's an AI. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. All right. Well, there we go. Is there anything else you wanted to ask? <laughs> Or is that... oh, I, no, I think that was it. Really, I'm just you know, I've been intrigued by you know how feasible it is to use AI to kind of write code, and, it, and I think you've proved it to me that it is definitely feasible. Yeah, and will only get better, presumably. Yeah, and not only that, but like, I I'm probably going to use it sometimes. Just like, uh. Sometimes you just don't want to write some code. Like, did you see my third reply to the tweet? Was that thing about we were trying to find all the checkpoints in a level, and yeah. that's the type of code that I don't remember. It, it's something I do once in a blue moon: is find all the disabled objects. I forgot how mm. to do it, so I just said like, "Hey, do it for me," and then like, it just means I don't have to write that code. It's quite boring mm. code to write, so if I can just generate it in five seconds, that's the type of thing I'd use it for. I can't see me doing this with that because I mean, this I could probably have written this in five minutes on my own. <laughs> but like um, the when it comes to yeah, but but I'm a game jammer, right? So you know, I make games in eight hours often. So for for me, this is like this is I'm used to writing games extremely quickly. Um, yeah. So, for someone like me, this is, uh, I don't know, it's not going to speed me up that much for something like this, but it definitely speed me up for really boring stuff that I just don't want to write. Mm. Um, and I could see in the future. I mean, th th I'm quite happy about this because I was wondering, like, hey, you never know. What if you, what if your arm falls off or something? You know, like what, like what would you do if if my mm. entire career is dependent on me having hands? What happens if if I go to hospital one day? I like something happens. I lose my hands. I, am I just screwed? Whereas now I think mm. the answer is no. Like I would be less efficient, but I think with voice to text, you know, I I could probably I could probably survive. You know, and be able to do my job with with mm. this. Um. It's true. I guess that, that's another option really we talked about is accessibility. Mm -hmm. um, Even imagining I went blind or something, like yeah. as long as I can get something to dictate the code back to me and just listen to it, I could probably blindfolded write code with this. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Just dictating to the computer what to do and then getting it to dictate the code back to me. Like, I don't mm. actually physically need to see it. I mean, it, obviously, it'd be mu it's much easier. Sight is definitely the, you know, the most powerful sense when it comes to writing code. But I'm, mm. I'm pretty sure that, you know, I could probably get away with doing that. This is fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like it's the color scheme as well. It's good. <laughs> I better go. All right. Thanks again for taking the time to chat. It's been brilliant chatting with you. What fun. What larks. Yeah, it has been um, an absolute lark. That's a good description. <laughs>